Hello everyone, and welcome to Beyond the 5G Hype, the series where we look beyond the buzzwords and dive straight into what's really happening behind the scenes with 5G. As many of you already know, our sponsor Qualcomm is one of the leading industry players pushing 5G forward, and they'll be sharing their insights with us throughout this series. Today we'll be tackling the topic of 5G NR, what and how far along it is, and what needs to happen next to put 5G in the hands of consumers. With us today to shed some light on the subject are Lorenzo Cazaccia, Qualcomm's Vice President of Technical Standards, and Joe Madden, Principal Analyst at Mobile Experts. All right, guys, thank you for joining us today. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Happy to be here, Diana. All right, so Lorenzo, let's get started. I mean, right now uh, we, we hear a lot about 5G in uh, the industry, but for a lot of people it's kind of this amorphous blob of technology that promises, you know, lower latency, uh, faster speeds, and massive connectivity. But I want to back up for a second uh, and see if you can explain to us, I mean, what is 5G NR? About every 10 years, the cellular industry sort of goes back to basics and looks back at the fundamentals of the system and designs a new system that uh, tries to build upon the uh, basic innovations that have occurred in the last decade. So 5G comes from that. There is an industry group called the 3GPP, which is actually a very large industry group. Everybody in the cellular world participates into this industry group. And that's where technology innovation happens for the evolution of standardization systems. So about 10 years ago, there was uh, everybody got together and 4G LTE uh, got designed. Now what is happening in the last couple of years, everybody got together and a new system is being designed. The radio interface for this new system is called uh, NR, new radio. And uh, that's the radio interface that is underlying the overall 5G concept. So what then, what is then into this new radio? What is this black box? The industry is looking at very fundamental concepts. For example, the ability to do much larger bandwidth, uh, the ability to have cellular transmission in new types of spectrum, going high in frequency, for example. Uh, cellular systems, 1G, 2G, 3G, 4G, have always operated somewhat lower end of the spectrum, but there's a lot of spectrum that is available going higher in frequencies. And previous generations of technology were not able to really uh, uh, leverage all of this spectrum because uh, the technology was not there. So we are studying and standardizing technology that will make it possible to access this type of spectrum. And then there is being a lot of advancement in uh, fundamental silicon technology that will allow us to have uh, radically lower latency on the radio interface, which will become a very foundational concept for things like virtual reality, for example, or uh, remote medicine or control system for controlling drones or autonomous vehicles or that sort of things where a very low latency is required. And at the end, the fundamental enabler for those things is a, a, a much better silicon technology. All right, excellent. Joe, I want to see if you can chime in here uh, from your analyst perspective and let us know how 5G really fits into the wireless evolution. Well, yes, I can. I, I think Lorenzo has a good point that every 10 years, our industry comes back to the basics and we look at what technology is capable of doing and what people want to do with their with their wireless devices. Uh, with 2G, we created wireless phones uh, and effectively killed the landline market. Uh, with 3G, we put email into your wireless phone. And with 4G, we put the entire internet in your pocket. Um, and so now people ask, well, why do we do 5G? We already have the entire internet capability in your smartphone. And uh, what I'm finding is people still want to do more. Uh, a lot of people want to watch videos and other entertainment over their uh, cellular phones, but uh, frankly, LTE is too expensive. Uh, so I think uh, we're really looking at this generation as a way to take new technology, bring down the cost of delivering video entertainment and other high bandwidth services uh, at a cost that's, uh, that's affordable. All right, great. So Lorenzo, can you tell us a little bit more about how we get to 5G? I mean, who is defining what 5G is and how far along are we to getting some specifications? So uh, the work on uh, 5G started in 3 around the end of 2015. There was a big workshop where everybody brought their basic visions and ideas on what 5G should look like. 
And then uh, during 2016, there's been a, 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 a so-called study item. Study item is, uh, is basically the moment in time where it is a bit academic in nature, where basic new ideas are brought to the table and people discuss different variants of those basic ideas. For example, new channel coding schemes are proposed, again, based on advancements on fundamental underlying technology, and these channel coding schemes are debated, or new waveforms are brought to the table, new modulations, and all those sort of things. So all of that has happened, and now we are in 2017, and uh, we are at the point in time where we are doing, uh, we're gonna do the work item. Work item in FreeGPP means when we are actually writing the, uh, the standard. So we are in the process of really ironing out all of the details to have the first version of the standard. Now what has happened is that there has also been a very important decision to accelerate uh, the phasing of the definition of the standard and therefore there is a target to complete the first version of the standard December of this year which will enable then commercial launches around 2019. So right now we are exactly in that phase where all of these details are being ironed out, which is a process that is gonna take several months and, uh, and will conclude at the end of the year. I just wanted to follow up on something though. I know Qualcomm recently came out with the X50 modem and I was wondering, can you tell me a little bit m more about where that fits into the, the evolution to, to 5G equipment and things like that? Well, we announced, uh, we, we announced uh, uh, the, the fact that we will have uh, a, eventually a free GVP compliant modem. Uh, the, the announcement uh, kind of goes, uh, is a kind of continuum to all the work that we've been doing in 5G for a number of years. So you, you have to see it uh, in this kind of continuum. We have been doing uh, uh, basic research on 5G, even of course before the standardization started. Now we are very engaged in standardization. And then in parallel to standardization, we are working with a variety of industry partners, network infrastructure vendors, and uh, cellular operators to do interoperability testing and trialing and prototyping. And all of this interoperability testing that we are doing is FreeGPP compliant. What does it mean? It means that as FreeGPP is making decisions, we incorporate these decisions in our test beds, and then we trial them with our partners. So this is facilitating network readiness, is getting operators to be familiar with the technology, and in general is moving the ecosystem faster towards commercialization. And then at the end of that path, there is gonna be a commercial modem. So once all of the interoperability testing is done, once the networks are ready, because in order to have devices, you need to have a commercial grade chipset, and that is gonna be our X50 modem. So that's where it fits. It fits at the end of this continuum that starts from a very big engagement in research that started before standard and all of the work into standards and then interoperability testing. Excellent. I would love to turn back to Joe for a second here. Uh, Joe, we're, we're talking here about how 5G uh, specifications are being accelerated, and I know you personally have done some studies uh, tracking the cost per gigabyte uh, to deliver data to smartphones, you know, video, uh, the Facebook uh, traffic that Lorenzo was talking about. I mean, so from your perspective, what's the rush for operators to get to 5G? I mean, isn't this going to be an expensive build right after they've just finished LTE? Yeah, that's a good point. And uh, what, what I've noticed in the last three years of publishing research on 5G is that the mobile industry reached consensus on the way that the technology was going to work uh, fairly quickly. Uh, so there, there, the cycle of developing technology has come together quickly, I think because there is a big pull from the mobile operator community. Uh, so you ask, what's the hurry? I, I think the reason is that the mobile operators are no longer just competing with themselves. Uh, they're now competing with cable operators and other uh, service providers for entertainment and video. Um, I think the mobile operators are starting to see themselves as, as uh, more entertainment suppliers than they are phone companies. Uh, if you look at the revenue and the, the amount of data uh, handled by some of the mobile operators, uh, the part that's related to voice calls on a telephone has uh, gone to a diminishingly small portion of their business. Uh, 
Uh, really, they're much more interested in buying companies like Time Warner or getting exclusive content for sports and other uh, video programming. And by doing that, trying to draw more subscribers onto their network and having more subscribers use their technology. Um, I want to give one example of, of really why they need to go to 5G in order to make that work. And that is, uh, let, let's take the on-demand uh, video entertainment market. If you rent an HD movie, uh, which is a five gigabyte file, and uh, the mobile operator needs to deliver that from a, an LTE 4G base station uh, from a tower, uh, the cost per gigabyte can be in the range of $1.50 to $2 for each gigabyte. That five gigabyte movie could cost them almost $10 to deliver. And, uh, and that simply doesn't work because the rental price for a movie is about $5 or so, right? Um, in the case of 5G, our calculations are that we may be able to get to the range of 20 cents per gigabyte to deliver that HD content. And, uh, and then you could get that five gigabyte movie through the pipe uh, for less than one dollar. Uh, that makes a video business case for the operators work. It enables them to compete with the cable companies and, and with uh, over the top companies that are on the wired internet today. Uh, and of course the mobile companies would have the advantage of being untethered. Uh, so I think with the young, younger generation watching everything on handheld devices, uh, they, they have a big advantage in the future entertainment market. You're right, Joe. That certainly does seem like it'll be a big difference. Uh, so, Lorenzo, back to you. Um, you know, operators are chomping at the bit. Uh, the standards have been accelerated. What happens next? How do operators and industry stakeholders like Qualcomm push things forward to make 5G a commercial reality? Well, as I said, there are, there are going to be two things that's going to, actually multiple things going to happen next. There's a lot of engineers at work to finish the standard. The standard is far from finished and there's a lot of work ahead of us. So there's a lot of uh, more obscure work from uh, hundreds of engineers that are really uh, ironing out all of the details of the 5G standard. In parallel, there are even more hundreds of engineers that are working building the products and building the test beds to getting it out on the market. So that's uh, what is really ahead of us that keeps us busy until the end of this year and then in 2018, 2019. As this happens, of course, we are also thinking about uh, what's coming next. There's already behind the corner, there's gonna be a second phase of uh, 5G. Uh, for a 5G evolution, if you want. So we're already thinking from a basic technology point of view of what are the next steps. For example, one area that uh, we are really excited about is the expansion of 5G into a licensed spectrum. So we have, had done, we have done a lot of work with LTE into a licensed spectrum, what has been called LAA, which is gonna get commercial in the US uh, now this year and gonna enable gigabit LTE. The same concept, again, can be expanded into 5G, and uh, that is something that we will uh, work on uh, in the next few months and into 2018. It's an exciting concept because uh, it will bring the capability of cellular into a licensed spectrum into even, to even greater levels. For example, it will enable 5G to be used for private network deployments, uh, private IoT deployments. You will see cellular system being used in a more diverse uh, uh, range of settings or than, than just uh, uh, cellular phones, we hope. All right. So that's well, one uh, exciting area. Awesome. Well, I think it seems like that we have a lot to keep our eyes on going forward, and uh, we will be sure to do that in subsequent episodes of Beyond the 5G Hype. So everybody stick with us, and we will be plumbing the depths of 5G with Qualcomm coming up. Thank you. Okay. Thank you.